Hello, I'm Maya Soma and today we'll be talking about Buddhist robes. We will be looking at a few frequently asked questions. What is the proper way for a bhikkhuni to wear the robe? Is it the same or is it different from bhikkhus? Some folks believe that bhikkhunis are not allowed to show their bare right shoulder. In fact, a quick Google search on bhikkhunis might seem to confirm this view, especially if one looks at pictures of bhikkhunis in many well-known and respected Buddhist monasteries. But let's set our assumptions aside and look instead into the Vinaya Pitika, the canonical Buddhist monastic code. Here we find, first and foremost, that bhikkhus and bhikkhunis have three main robes, which are the same for both. These are all simple rectangles of cloth, which are folded around the body and can be held in place by a belt. There is the antravasaka, or lower robe, which is like a sarong that goes from the waist to the knees. There is the uttarasanga, or upper robe, which covers the torso and upper legs and is usually worn either with both shoulders covered or with the right shoulder out. And finally, the sangati, or cloak, which has an extra layer of cloth and is usually worn over the upper robe or folded for sleeping, especially useful during cold spells. Now in the bhikkhuni vinaya, we find two extra robes for bhikkhunis, a sankachika, that is normally translated as bodhis or vest to wear under the upper robe, and the udakasatika, the bathing cloth. These days, we often see pictures of Theravada bhikkhus and bhikkhunis wearing slightly different garments. Often the bhikkhus will leave their shoulder bare while the bhikkhunis will wear a jacket underneath. So the natural question that can arise is, is this jacket the Sankachika mentioned in the Vinaya? To find our answer, we should dig once again into the rules around bhikkhu and bhikkhuni robes more closely. First and foremost, in the Vinaya, there are a few rules that apply to both bhikkhus and bhikkhunis equally, and that deal specifically with how one should don the robe. In two rules, Sekia number three, Supatichanno Antragare Gamisamiti Sika Karaniya, and also Sekia number four, Supatichanno Antragare Nisidi Samiti Sika Karaniya, it is stated that when one is going in a village or town, one should be well covered. Supatichanno. Now the word well covered is not defined in the Vinaya, but in the Vinaya commentary it specifies this as meaning not exposing one's shoulders or torso. We should point out that these two rules only apply while one is outside the monastery and in a village or town. It does not apply while one is inside a monastery or in the wilderness. In this case, a more relevant rule is Sekian number one, which defines how to wear one's robes while in the monastery. Again, this rule applies equally to both bhikkhus and bhikkhunis. It is defined in the Vinaya as This means that the robe should cover one's body from the navel to the knees. So from this, we can gather that in the Vinaya, there is no requirement to cover the body above the navel or below the knees for either bhikkhus or bhikkhunis, if they're in the monastery or in wilderness areas outside of villages. As a matter of fact, in the Vinaya, we find the basic rules for any Sangha Kama, which is a formal Sangha decision or act, and they begin by specifying that the bhikkhu or the bhikkhuni must first e kamsam uttrasangam karitva, that is, wear the robe covering only one shoulder. There is no exception made by gender. This means that it is not only allowed for bhikkhus and bhikkhunis to expose one shoulder while in a monastery, but that it is actually required when performing any formal Sangha Kama. If we dig even deeper in the Bhikkhuni Kandaka, the Vinaya section detailing minor bhikkhuni-specific rules, we will also find several sections referencing bhikkhunis arranging their robe over one shoulder for communal acts or formal requests. So really the only difference between the robe rules for bhikkhus and bhikkhunis is to be found in a single Vinaya rule, bhikkhuni pachitya number 96, yapana bhikkhuni asankachika gamam paliseya pachityam. This specifies that when a bhikkhuni enters a village, she must be wearing a sankachika, the Vinaya defines this as sankachikam nama adakakam ubanabi tassa patichadana taya, that is, a piece of cloth which covers the area below the clavicle and above the navel. In other words, it covers the central part of the torso, where a woman's breasts are located. 
as the lower edge of the clavicle or collarbone is on the same plane as the armpits and the zancatrica is defined as covering an area below the clavicle, it clearly does not cover the shoulders or the arms. Paecetia number 96, the rule on the Sankachika, does not apply in a monastery or a wilderness. It applies only when a bikuni is in a village. So what we find in the Theravada Vinaya then is that not only is a jacket not part of the bikuni robe set, and it is not only that a bikuni is allowed to show her bare shoulder, but she's in fact obligated by Vinaya to show her shoulder in certain circumstances and assumed to do so unless in a village. Actually, in a monastery or wilderness area, bhikkhuni is perfectly allowed to be topless. Just as many bhikkhus in forest monasteries, especially in Sri Lanka, do, whereas women are frequently depicted in ancient Indian Buddhist art. So as we have seen in the Vinaya, it seems to be standard for bhikkhunis to have one bare shoulder. That's because the idea of a jacket or a blouse is in fact a modern concept. So if it is not found in the Vinaya, where does this idea come from that Theravada bhikkhunis shouldn't show their shoulder? In Indian culture, it was a sign of respect to show the right shoulder, and it was a custom amongst royalty as well. We see hints of this in the Buddhist texts in general, where monks arrange their robe over one shoulder when paying respects or formally greeting and requesting things of another. It is also easy enough to see how in most South and Southeast Asian countries with a tropical climate, the traditional dress usually has at least one shoulder uncovered, or sometimes is topless altogether. The concept of modesty as we know it, or the idea of covering certain parts of the body due to their shamefulness, is culture and time period specific. The idea that the shoulder or upper body should not be exposed, especially in women, comes mainly from contact with European and Arab powers, cultures with long histories of Christianity and Islam. It is not a Buddhist concept and it was not part of these traditional Buddhist cultures. So while some people perceive showing the shoulder as a radical and new feminist action, the reality is quite the opposite. One just needs to look at the traditional art of Sri Lanka, Thailand, and Burma before the revival of bikuni ordination to find examples of both lay women and bikunis without the same concepts of modesty present in other cultures. Unfortunately, there has been a movement in recent times to depict ancient bikunis with a jacket or shirt underneath their robes in modern Asian art. These types of movements to make fashion and art more modest according to modern standards has repeated through history. For example, 500 years ago, the Roman Catholic Church hired artists to add fig leaves covering private parts depicted in earlier paintings and sculptures from the Romans all the way to Michelangelo, and that were considered immodest by the standards of the time. We might not think it's a big deal to add a shirt on artwork, but these alterations in the depiction of bikunis are problematic when they mislead others into thinking that this is the standard and proper dress for a Theravada bikuni, or even worse, that it is not allowed for bikunis not to wear the jacket. But the biggest problem here is that the imposition on women to wear separate clothing can become an obstacle to Dhamma practice and achieving liberation, achieving awakening. The rules around robes for bhikkhus and bhikkhunis in the Vinaya make the form for men and women look identical. We can see a trace of this also in Mahayana and Vajrayana. Both bhikkhus and bhikkhunis shave their head and both wear the same main robes and bowl. The only difference is in a minor undergarment used when going into public that is not visible from the outside, which is probably actually another skillful means to make the monastics look like they are from the third gender, as they say in Thailand. Not men, not women, but the Samana gender. This goes against the standard not only in societal norms, but also in many other monastic and spiritual traditions, where women are required to dress differently from men to remind them and society at large of their identity as a woman or a man. If Buddhist practice is about letting go of our attachment to bodily and social identity, and the monastic Sangha is meant to represent the archetype Buddha's disciples practicing for liberation, it seems only counterproductive to enforce external non-Vinaya standards on women in Buddhism. Following the Buddha's Dhamma Vinaya can be controversial because the Dhamma Vinaya goes against the stream of what the world is used to. The rules in the Vinaya Pitaka also can go against our habits, even against the common monastic customs and practices in Buddhist circles. Now that we've uncovered some of those common myths surrounding bhikkhunis and their robes, let's apply these teachings and the wisdom for our growth in the Dhamma as a Sangha at large. 
If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to add them in the comments underneath the video and we will try our best to answer them. May you be well, happy and peaceful and may all good things come to you. Sadu, sadu, sadu.